Hey everyone, how y'all doing? OT Dude here. Hope you're all having a nice day. I wanted to make a quick, hopefully a quick video about the terminology and the difference between the terms initial orthostatic hypotension and orthostatic hypotension, which is sometimes referred to as classical orthostatic hypotension. Just like the name implies classical orthostatic hypotension, that's probably the term that you're thinking about of the phenomenon of when a patient has a positional change, such as from supine to standing up, in which case they may exhibit symptoms and chief complaints such as feeling lightheaded or dizzy or faint. And or when you take their blood pressure, they may have a drop in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, such as by a blood pressure cuff, uh, both manually and or automatically. So. That's your classical orthostatic hypotension. That leads to the question, what is initial orthostatic hypotension, right? So I found an article titled orthostatic hypotension in the first minute after standing up. What is the clinical relevance and do symptoms matter? Let's take a look at it. And this is actually found in the American Heart Association website, this uh, post, and it's by authors Winjin harms and wheeling published in 2018. Basically it talks about how with the advent of the technology, we have been basically been able to continuously and non-invasively measure the blood pressure, such as a transient fall in blood pressure that occurs amazingly within the first 30 seconds of standing. So if you scroll, we scroll down here, initial orthostatic hypotension, has been defined as a transient decrease in systolic blood pressure of greater than 40 millimeters of mercury and or sorry here it's blocking and or 20 millimeters of mercury in diastolic blood pressure within 15 seconds of standing with complete recovery within 30 seconds basically so they go on to mention that in clinical practice, the systolic cutoff is usually used. Initial orthostatic hypotension is a clinical sign and may be symptomatic or asymptomatic. The physiological mechanism underlying initial orthostatic hypotension is a mismatch between cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance and can be either based on a fallen cardiac output or systemic vascular resistance during the BP. Let's take a look at and compare and contrast this to classical orthostatic hypotension, which is defined as a sustained decrease of greater than or equal to 20 millimeters of mercury in systolic blood pressure or greater than 10 millimeters mercury in diastolic blood pressure between 60 and 180 seconds of standing. So if we compare the two, we see that there is a difference in that the drop in blood pressure is actually greater in the initial orthostatic hypotension definition. So we have 40 mmHg and 20 mmHg systolic and diastolic respectively versus compared to the classical orthostatic hypotension definition, which is 20 and 10 millimeters of mercury systolic and diastolic respectively. And also you'll notice what there is a difference in between the time, right? So basically because of the definition initial, the initial OH is a recovery within 30 seconds. In contrast, in classical or your typical orthostatic hypotension, your time is between 60 or 180 seconds of standing. So clinically, what does this mean, right? We don't have such sensitive measuring tools like they do in this study, in which they're able to basically measure within 30 seconds. And while that's nice and great, clinically we measure basically by the time I get a blood pressure cuff on them, it's typically after this time frame. And you know, it takes time to measure and pump up and then get a reading if it's automatic. And if you do it manually, it's gonna take some time as well, right? So typically that time I would imagine past that 30 second window for an initial orthostatic hypotension reading anyways, and you would fall under the category of classical orthostatic hypotension. So a lot of studies actually differentiate, you know, in the findings of classical and initial orthostatic hypotension. Delayed recovery 
is defined as the inability of the systolic blood pressure to recover to the tw less than 20 millimeter mm i can never say mmhg of supine baseline values so basically there is a delay that can be considerable but recovery occurs by definition within three minutes of standing so there is this graph that they included in the study and this is a graph basically plotting four different patients on your x-axis is times zero to about a minute and on your vertical axis you have both blood pressure and heart rate uh, we're just going to pay attention to the blood pressure these little ticks are 80 and 120 for in the in between the 40 and 160 so they're and that falls, that's your basic, you know, average population norm blood pressure, right? 120 systolic over 80 diastolic. The first graph on the very top, you have a normal blood pressure recovery in a 26 year old healthy female. The vertical ticks here is basically your positional change in the patient. So they go from supine to standing basically. So as expected, with normal recovery, you have a patient who is in supine, they basically go back to the same blood pressure that they were at baseline. But interestingly, even for a normal blood pressure recovery, in by definition in a healthy, otherwise healthy female that's 26, you'll notice that the blood pressure actually does drop right when they stand up within that 10, the basically 10 to 15 second window and interestingly if you actually look at the the rest of the examples in the graph they also show a, a right when the line passes you'll notice a drop such, such as in the second graph and the third graph as well as the fourth graph and the second graph depicts basically initial orthostatic hypotension that's Basically, you're within your 30 second window, you're going to have that drop. So this example is a 14 year old healthy male. So keep in mind, healthy male, they show how you have a drop basically in the initial orthostatic hypotension. Now, delayed recovery is basically you can think of it as a longer stretch of time that it takes for the patient to recover back to baseline after their positional change. So you have that same drop in the, on the third graph here, basically systolic as well as diastolic blood pressure. However, it takes a longer time to go back to that baseline. Now, let's take a look at our last graph, the classical orthostatic hypotension. It's what's interesting is this is a 76 year old man with primary autonomic failures. If you compare it to the other patients, they actually do have a higher systolic uh, blood pressure initially at baseline. But anyways, right when they stand up, they have that drop as well in blood pressure, so orthostatic hypotension. But look, going on to the 60, 30 to 60 second window, they do not have that recovery that the other patients have had. The delayed recovery had it, but it took longer the normal and initial orthostatic had it but basically not with that that time frame you'll you'll notice that so basically what's the concern right clinically with patients it's possible that with prolonged orthostatic hypotension if left untreated such as if the patient is in laid back down or you don't treat it by giving them fluids multi-pronged approach the patient may have become symptomatic and may have a syncopal episode, right? Which could further lead to a fall and bad things can happen. So, you know, as occupational therapists, we all try to avoid having those things happen. And I'll post a link to this article in the description below for you guys to check out. And it's a really good read. It's really interesting. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Like and subscribe if you found this content helpful and I will see you all in the next one. Have a nice day.